Ladies and gentlemen, There is, but it's not turned on. This one works. What's this time again? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ashes. This has become a tradition, and we're well on the way to the match. If you've already been watching, and uh, I can see we've got 13 online, so uh, it's time for you to unlock your wives, guys, and uh, let them out and watch the TV and call their friends and get a few more online watching. We've got a uh, we've got some wireless mics now too, so we're going to actually mic a few players up during the course of the day, and they can uh, give their insight to what they're going to do as they're playing the frames. But just be warned in advance if they make mistakes or things don't go to plan, they may accidentally slip up and pop out a few swear words, so uh, just be mindful of that fact. We can't control everything here. As we've just watched Robbie Wood going off, and Butters will take two shots, but with a pretty tough clearance to have to make because Robbie has covered that pocket very neatly. And uh, for those who don't know what this is about, basically it's, I'm not going to really say it's a really serious comp. Everyone's trying, but it's a fun day. Um, just to round up the year it's been and just get together with some friends, throw a few uh, frothies in and basically just enjoy the company. But there is a lot of rivalry. And the uh, English team have actually stacked their side a bit this year. They haven't beaten Australia yet, but this, this potentially could be the first year. So Bud is still carrying two. He's got still quite a lot of work to do, as you can see. But we'll have the, he will be looking at getting everything out in one shot, trusting to a little bit of luck. Um, and when I say that, he, like the balls that he kicks out... He, he's going to have no control exactly of where they go, so he's going to hope that you know they don't get killed to another cushion or something. He'll want them both in, out in the open where he can actually navigate the out still. So, so back across he goes. Now this might be... Oh, he might take this long ball first now because he's got right behind it. I don't think he's actually meant that, but doesn't matter. He's had a look at it. He's sizing it up. Pretty sure he's going to play it. So now he's going to screw off this, which will make the show a little bit more difficult, but I'm still expecting to pot it. And, well, he's missed it. But now he does have snooker options, but the up and down will be available for Robbie Wood. So he may actually Hello? kick in with these two balls that are really close together and make a much harder up and down, and that's what he is doing. Well, I don't think I would have played a lot of that. In fact, I think he's left it on. He's actually tried to block the up and down, which was clever. 
but I think he might have left a snick on this red. But it's still a tricky shot just because of the jaw. So you can't just play to just drop it in. You've got to get the wide out and you don't want to catch the jaw. So just sizing up his options and, well, I'm not sure what he's doing. He's going to pop the yellow over the pocket, I think, and say, here, butters have two and see what you can do with this. Now, I don't like this shot, although it's, it comes down to what I said before. It, butters is going to play the kick out. He's going to trust a little bit of luck where the balls go. Um, actually, you know what, in hindsight, that probably was the correct shot if he couldn't pot the red without too much danger. There's no point in trying to check it up with a swerve because the white ball would have stayed in the, in the jaws. So here comes the kick out. He'll be screwing off this one at the bottom, trying to kick the other one across. I tell you what, that's landed not bad, has it? He's got a pot, and that's all that matters. So it's a good shot there from Butters. Got the only thing that could have worked out better there is if the white ball stayed in this other half of the table, but he'll be happy if he's got a shot. And I'll tell you what, this table flies because he's hardly hit that, and that's just travelled back up to the table where it was. So one good long ball, medium range, and this should be frame. And that is missed by 14 foot. <laughs> Butters has looked at me like he doesn't know what's happened. That's the first time I've seen Butters try and drag a ball in. <laughs> Butters has actually just put himself on the twitch. Robbie Wood has just got a, a, an unnecessary cannon, but it doesn't matter. He will pot that black. And uh, Butters twice now has done a lot of hard work in his frames, and he's just chopped up at the end. So he'll be looking to make amends. I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to actually leave this mic on, and I'm going to commentate my own frame. Just for fun. I'm playing Tony. I'm playing Tony, so I'm about... $9.40 to win this frame because you get kicked out of the venue if you beat the uh, venue owner. So I don't think I've much chance, but I'll have a crack. And Dan's going to give me the thumbs up as I walk over the table to make sure the mic still works. I'm right in front of the commentary area, so we're not traveling too far away, but I think it's my break as well. And I'll be looking to absolutely spifflicate these balls. Pot at least four to 14 balls off the break and just have the black left on the table to just pot with a nice simple ball over the pocket. And the rudeness of Tony as well, he's actually making me wait. Venue owners think they can do anything. <laughs> Not playing you, am I? No. Playing Tony, I think. I might not be up yet. Oh, I'm not up yet. Which one, which one are we going off? This one or that one? Oh, I am up. It's all happening. Now, I've never played with a mic before. I don't know what's going to get in the way of my action, but we'll find out. Good luck, Tony. I'm playing with a mic on, mate, so I'm going to tell you. Is it your break? Oh, I didn't get the break last frame. Whose break is it? Yeah, it is your break. No, I'm six. I'm six. All right. So as I said, I'm going to be looking to spifflicate these, not dump the white like Ben Noonan in the middle and try and pot a few. That's a pretty horrible break, actually, but I have snuck one in the middle there somehow. Now, it's a little bit congested. I've got this ball up in the bulk area with the red and yellow. I'm not really sure what to do with yet. I'm just trying to work that out. Might be able to get behind it here, but... Needs to be pretty spot on with the white, but I'm probably going to have a go at it, I think. Yellow's Tony. So I'm just going to try and pot this in the middle and screw down a bit, pinch a bit of angle. That's not bad, actually. 
Would have liked it a touch further. I'm going to struggle not to pot the red here, though. May have to leave it. I take this ball on and I don't get it, or I pot his red, I'm in huge trouble. But I leave it there, I'm also in trouble, so screw it, I'm going to take it on. Now I'm happy with it over the pocket. It was a tough pot to uh, get without potting his red off out. Problem is though, I've left him the ball over the pocket. He can just sneak behind the uh, other red and just take it on. And that's exactly what he's done. So I'm actually in a bit of trouble here. I'd, in most cases, I wouldn't be against a, uh, a top line player. I wouldn't be expecting to get another shot here. This is, this, is, this is probably my key chance right here if he takes this long ball on near the black. I think it's the shot he's got to play, but it might be my only chance. If he, if he pots this, I'm actually screwed, I think. Well, he hasn't potted, but... What am I going to do with this yellow near the black is the first question I ask myself. And uh, if I was queuing amazing, oh, it's alright, that yellow's not on up the top there. So I haven't really got a heap of options. I guess I'm a little bit fortunate these two reds that he's put over the hole, they're not on, they're not set, so he may have to waste a shot on them. So I might actually kick this yellow out and just take the white ball long. Just try and cause, get into a better spot. Just try and cause some traffic and just keep the white ball safe. And now, now I'm, I've just got that yellow little touch in the other one and they're a bit awkward. There's a bit of separation there. It'll probably be looking pretty good. May have left in the ball down the bottom though, which is a bad shot from me. I have. But I'm still not too stressed at the moment about this situation. He's still got a really tough uh, tough out if he wants to take it on. He has got this long ball up inside my yellow, which is a fairly big pocket. Looks like he's just going to play safety on me and leave me the tough shot. I may be forced to have a crack here if he does do that. So a good player, a good player would get these, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Still got these uh, two balls touching one another, which are really awkward. I've got an angle here to get a cannon, but I can't cannon the yellows direct. I've really got to cannon the red into the yellows. And then there's, they're not really on in any other pocket. I could possibly try and get on this ball that's to the right of them and try and get a bit of disturbance, but... Have a crack at this. Well, it's not bad. I'll just once again make this yellow a little awkward, but it does sneak up the top there, so if I can get behind it, I'll be all right. Got to wait for uh, another table before I play this shot. We've got situations like this. It's probably best not to rush straight into them and just get down and start banging balls in it. You really do need to map the out out. And the way I'm looking at this out is I'm going to pot this ball that I'm right behind in this corner that I'm standing at. I'm going to try and just play this ball thin. Probably, I'll probably have to use a little bit of side and try and get right behind this yellow that's in the middle of the table. It goes to the other end. And then I'm going to run through that, get on the ball in the middle and for, so I can get an angle to get onto the black. So it's actually a pretty tough out, this. I'll tell you what, I'm lucky to pot that. That was a terrible shot. And I've actually given myself a really bad angle now to get back up on that ball. 
what you call an imbecile shot. So I've just used a fair bit of side there just to straighten it up. I've actually straightened it up too much and that's horrible. This is going absolutely nowhere. I'm going to have to run through this, try and slide past the yellow and play it in the, uh, in the other middle. And I don't know if that's happening actually. It's going to be really close to cannoning it. Might be able to just sneak past it, I think. Oh, I've just got that little cannon. That's screwed me up. That's what I was worried about. Couldn't avoid not hitting it with top either. Now I've just, I don't really see a shot except for maybe a double in this, uh, in this corner. I don't have to worry about the white ball really. I'm going to get some kind of shot on the black, but this double's a tough double. It's not even on. So I'm actually going to have to try and take it off the yellow. This is just uh, horrible. It's the only shot I've got. No good. That's all I had. Probably had to hit that twice as hard as I did, just to square it up more. And that's just a really good example of how just the smallest little nudge on a ball that I got that shot before that can absolutely destroy your frame. And I don't really expect Tane to chop this up, although he's made that a little trickier than he would have liked, which is good for me. He's got a lot of transitioning to do here from ball to ball, especially because of the way the black is. So, well, he's played that pretty well, but... Yeah, I don't expect him to miss these. This is not hard. I just have to pray it gets straight on this, like that. So, if I'm him here, I don't... You can either roll this, roll this red in and just try and get the black in and play and kill the yellow, or you flick off this and promote the red, get the white safe. But I think I'll just drop this in. That's what he's opted to do. And now I'm actually in huge trouble. I'm probably going to have to go up and down after this shot and try and pop the yellow in the middle. I don't actually expect him to pop this, but if he does, well, he certainly deserves a frame. Carol's even filming this for an occasion. I must be special. I'll tell you, that's a pretty good shot. I think I'm forced to go up and down here. I don't, don't think this will pop. It's pretty thin. I don't really like it, to be honest. No, I definitely do not like that. So I'm going to have to go up and down. It does cut, but I'll let you on a little secret. I shouldn't be doing this for the public, but uh, I do cut the ball thin extremely terribly. So I think up and down is the shot. I probably don't want to play this direct. Probably off two cushions is better. And, and, and flick it in. Although actually having another look at it now, direct might be better. I could also... No, nah, that's the only shot. I've got to go up and down. That is missed by four foot. That is one of the worst shots you'll ever see in eight ball. 
and I will lose the frame. Thanks, Tony. Well done, mate. And that's how you uh, get beat, guys. So I'm zero from two now. Zero from one with the mic on. I'll try and win my last frame. I'm going to keep the mic on for my last frame as well. I can't actually expect to be winning too many frames. I haven't played since the war. And uh, when you don't practice this game, you do not play at your best, I can promise you that. Who are we watching here? The other butters. And he will want to pot this. Punch this up the other end of the table off the right side cushion. He can play it as a sort of a shot to nothing. He's just under hit it a little bit, has he? Just a touch. I'm not against him actually playing the double on this, but playing it wide, so you're not going for the pot. Or you could just promote it actually, but just use the other red on the table to get a snooker. Oh, he's got two, I've been told, so he's not going to do that. I don't know what's happened on the other table, but Temujin's just gone off his chops over there. He must have played a big shot. You can see Butters lining up here. And he's missed that. But it's landed actually in a really good spot. Or oh, would have liked to have come up a little bit further. And I sense a safety shot may be the order of the day here. I mean, you can take this pot on, come back down the table, off side cushion, back cushion, back up the table. But I don't think there's really a need for it. I don't mind him doubling this off too, taking a white ball in behind the other red. And that's what he's done. Just overhit it a touch, but still, I wouldn't be super unhappy with that shot. I mean, yes, it would have been better pulling up a touch, but don't expect Brian Daly to pop. I don't think the double goes to the top right corner as we look, and it, unless he belts it pretty hard to square it up, I don't think it'll go in the other pocket on a double, so... Maybe a double into the middle, but that's pretty tough. So we might see him lay up, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Played it pretty poorly, though. That really needed to be off the cushion of foot, that black, to, to apply pressure. I actually would have not played that ball over the middle of the table there. I would have left that and I would have played the other ball and brought that into play a bit better as well. It was just a really nice ball. It doesn't matter where he lands, it's going to be available. Now we can play the promotional shot without any danger. I'd actually be playing this black to the centre of the table and leaving the white ball down there, but he has opted to play the faggoty girly shot again. But at the end of the day, it's not bad because have a look where the... Uh, Look, look, look at the pot that's got to be made here. Could play the double also inside the black and try and cause some uh, havoc. Take this pot on. There's so many options here, but they're all tough. So he's going to take this cut on and try and go up and down, I think. And that's in. Oh, my God. He looks around. He looks around. Was anybody watching that, he says. <laughs> We're all watching it. He even got it on camera. 
Now the question is, can he pot this black? He's being forced to wait. Chooker's Chuk in his way. You can see Chooker on screen now. He's in his way. He's just chopped up himself. He lets out a little profanity in now. If he misses this black, I'll tell you what, get lock up your knives. And that's in. And that was not small. I love the way he looked around there to see if anyone was watching. And now Declan on the reds looking to punish Chuka for his absolute horrible shot. Fails to do so and Chuka with a big chance. And I'll tell you what, for those that haven't watched Chuka play before, you're in for a treat. He's got the best mannerisms around the table in the world. In the world. I haven't even seen every player in the world play, but I'll tell you what, they do well to beat this bloke. Once he gets going and he gets the strut going, you'll see the lips come together, which is why they call him Chuka. He's already got the strut going. Look at him go. Tell you what, he may have had a few uh, buckets of KFC over Christmas too, just quietly. So off the red, is he going to play it direct? Probably play it direct and free up the other yellow. Yep, that's a very good shot. And now, look at him. He's actually in. That's his normal speed when he's flowing. Like, the screen actually cannot keep up with it. I can, I'm actually watching the monitor, and it is blurring as he walks past the camera. I'm not kidding. Normally when he's flying, he does this 1,000 kilometer an hour walk. He gets down on the queue really quick, gets the lips together. He's just starting to hit that a touch. He's not going to be happy with that at all, but now he's going to have to uh, put a bit on this. this. You'll get a really good shot of his face here. Mate, so. so he's weighing up his options. He doesn't really like either of them as a simple option, but I think he's I think he's going to play this one close to pocket, which is actually one I, I wouldn't actually play this myself. But I don't know if he's going to be able to hold the white. Well, this is uh, far from easy. Although he does have that yellow up inside the red, which actually looks like a pretty big pocket. But the black, I think, is covered to the two obvious pockets, unless it goes the one he's just lining up. But I'll just have a look at myself. Actually, I'm just looking on screen, on your, as the viewers can see, and it does look like it passes the red. But this is the big shot coming up here. He's actually got to get the white ball off the rail, get himself fairly straight on this last shallow for a screw back, and he's missed it by a, a decent margin. May have got fortunate. That yellow may have covered the one over the pocket. And Declan, king of the headbutters in Geelong, he uh, just sizing up his options. Does not mind a headbutt, does Declan McDade. Meanwhile, Steve Halliday playing a pretty tough yellow on the other table has underhit it. And Pikey on the far table is going off his nut over there, potting everything. Kevin Alcott has accidentally missed and got a result. So here comes a safety from Declan. I can't see him taking a pot on. And that's exactly what he's done. But he's he's actually played out quite poorly, to be to be fair. Killed, killed the red. May have left this yellow inside the red. Look at him, look at him get down. You can tell when something's on with Chuka because he's banging straight down. And he has missed it.
So another chance for now. Declan's probably thinking, why did I kill that red on the rail like that? I, I, this could have been the middle of the table and would have been easy out. And not the best shot in the world. Would have liked to have got a lot closer to that, so he just was right behind it. So you basically play the shot exactly the same, but hit it harder. So Teklin just taking his time on this shot. I mean, automatic position. He doesn't have to do anything with a white, but the problem is if he misses it, he's probably going to lose the frame. He takes a double on. What a maniac. That's a great shot to nothing. Excellent shot. And he does have a chop on his red too. Very, very good shot. Did not see that myself. Um, and to be fair, probably the right shot. Here comes the chop. That's in. Where's the white ball going? It's landing perfect. That's where it's going. And I'll tell you what, England have absolutely smashed this this round, I think, if these two balls go in. I don't see Declan missing. Kevin Alcott has played a pretty good red, but he's actually smashed the crap out of it. And he's left himself a tough black, and now he's got up off a shot, realised, hang on, I need to have another cheeseburger, and I'm going to back, back down on this shot. And he's played that very well. And Kevin Olcos says, yes, I will have fries with that. And that was a crunch that round. Stevie J and Enrico playing in the last frame of the la of the second round, but I think we're hopping straight into the third round. And you can probably hear all the noise in the background from the English Muppets. This is why you cannot let these guys win. Because you hear this crap like Bay 13 no matter where you go. And the reason that they're like this is because we've been here for an hour and a half now, so they've all had about two cans each, so they're all off their head. So Chiefy now sporting his very, very bright yellow Australian top. I'll tell you what, I reckon that's had some nappy sand on it a couple of times. That is just brighter than bright, isn't it? He's busted out the hat as well. There's no stopping him. And Chiefy with probably one awkward yellow, and that's the one on the side cushion. Every, every other yellow is pretty available, black available to the corner, and really it's the pocket you really probably want to be on for anyway, so it's all going to come to this one dodgy ball on the cushion. If you can get right behind it, though, and roll it down. Well, this is his chance to screw across the table and get on it, but the problem is you can't just roll it anymore because the ball you're going to use to link off the rolling shot is about to pot. So it may actually have to be his last ball. He can just drop this in. He'll have an angle on the ball in the corner, just stun across just sort of towards the centre pocket and then play the run down.
Well, it, he's played a shot, I said, but it, it might be a bit straight. So he may have to run through and play for a double, maybe, although the red might be blocking the natural path. I have a feeling Chevy's too straight on this, so he may have to screw back and play the face cut double, and then he's going to need to screw it to take the white off side and bottom cushion for the black. So this has just turned into a pretty tough out. Well, let's see what he does. And he's, well, he screwed back a fair way. But the thing is, he actually had to screw back probably that far just to be able to catch the angle he needs for the back face cut. There's absolutely no way in hell he's holding the wide here, by the way. But if he can get lucky, where he can play this and cannon the red that's above the black, he'll at least have a shot on it. I don't really see any other options here. Unless this will double to the other corner. That's probably... But then I don't think he can hold the white there either. That's what he's played, but he's sort of undercut it by a fair bit. You can see where the white went just from that. So now Barry Wakefield has the frame at his absolute mercy, and he can pretty much do whatever he wants to. He doesn't even have to pot out. He can play a series of shots to nothings as well. And here comes one of them now. I think he's going to play this plant down the rail, take the white ball side cushion and back across the other side of the table as a snooker in case he doesn't get a favourable result. Best result here for um, Lee Gilpin is if he tries to drop in behind the red and doesn't get the shot right and leaves him some kind of pot. I think he's going to play the shot I said first. Play it right down. Probably take the white ball across. No, he's playing the girl shot, and he has actually left a shot on here. Well, the reason I didn't like that shot is just a terrible option for promoting your own ball and a reasonable risk of leaving a shot on. Whereas the, shot, the other shot, you play it right down here, you probably get coverage on the black. The white ball comes across. You leave absolutely no shot on, and you're almost guaranteeing yourself the frame. So Chiefy plays an excellent shot. Oh, he's actually been... He's been stiffer than a honeymooner there because that was a sensationally controlled shot and he's just caught the red in such a way where he can stoog himself. I'm going to put that on the stiff town train. But it does have the cross table option, which obviously is going to take... Most people undercut these. And that's exactly what he's done because they, they naturally go for the line of the pocket instead of the line that they need to actually hit the ball on an angle to hit the pocket. It's just a natural reaction to do. But he has given Barry something to think about here. Black near the pocket. Not an easy open of red. A tricky sort of, tricky sort of uh, shot you've got to play to get a snooker as well. Chipper's just played a very good shot on the other table as well. Dan's got all sorts of fancy crap going on there. And, uh, oh, Chipper's, I think he's left himself on this yellow. It's hard to tell from the camera angle. I think, he can, I think he can pot it, but the black's also going to be a tough shot afterwards. Oh, and he's jawed it. So Steve Gray will just... Uh, actually, I'll make the call. He cannot lose the frame for me. He's too, too cagey and too smart. And we'll probably just put in a series of snookers to pick up his two shots to uh, develop the frame. And there's one snooker straight away. And it looks like I'm actually going to be demiked because uh, Butters and Sean are going to actually play with mics on for their frame. So I'm going to miss, uh, you're going to miss me for a while and listen to these two clowns carry on.
Preston. Where does this go? Strap it on. Strap it on. How are we, Sean? I'm good. I think. Someone's going to end up motherless after. We 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 on, Dan? Someone's going to be north for three. <laughs> Uh, but is here, uh, Sean Partridge and I are about to play. I think we're both 0 and 2. Yes, we are, mate. Super. I've, I've only twitched twice. It's cost me two frames, mate. Sounds I familiar. I saw at least one from you, so <laughs> we're still, mate. We're still, mate. <sighs> Good luck, mate. You're the best. Mate. Uh, so the Poms have got us uh, by about two frames at the moment, coming into the last round. Hopefully we can peg a couple back here. Should be interesting playing with the mic on. Alright, and here we go. And did a Benny Noonan, dumped it straight in the middle. Thanks, mate. Go on, mate. Okay. <clears throat> uh, super start. All right. So Sean could talk you through the out. Would be nice to take advantage of this uh, rear occasion where Butters has gone in off. Probably looks like probably looks like yellows for me here. A little bit of work to do on both balls, but uh, going to go with the yellows so I can probably pull up at any stage and occupy a pocket if that's what needs to be done. So we'll get this one out of, in balk out of the way first. So that noise, noise you can hear is uh, Stevie J went in the rear frame. He's done very well there. All right, so we're going to just try and play a bit of check here and get on this ball to my left, far left. So, um, yeah. All right, it's not ideal, but it's not terrible. Bit uncomfortable with this headset on, so give me a tick. All right, I need one pretty good shot here. Try and hold for this double. It's my only dead ball to double, so um, just try and cue this nicely. Position will take care of itself if I can just cue it nice and stun the white. All right, I've got on the double that I wanted. Now, I'm just having a good look to see if this yellow closest to the red passes. If it does, I can probably just roll this double in. Not do too much with the white. Give myself every chance to knock it in. And um, hopefully just land on that red next to the yellow. Actually, looking at the angle I've got now, I've come around to this side of the table. I'm probably going to try and play this double and just stun down along the cushion for a choice of two yellows. Yeah, key shot here for Sean. That's, that's not ideal. That's uh, not the world's greatest result. It's um, left me, probably created a situation now where I've got a little bit more to do than what I've liked. Awkward bridging. I'm still on, still on one yellow, but I'll be bridging over. The, bridging over. I'm sort of in a position where I've got to make this ball now. Uh, not only have I got to bridge over, I've probably got to hit it with a bit of deep screw. 
try and get myself out. Um, actually, I probably don't have to come out as far as I originally thought because I can just play a gentle yellow off that yellow near the red. Um, but yeah, it's again, it's a bit of an all or nothing pot. I've had to play three or two of them so far. So, again, it's got to throw it and jack up, get online here and just concentrate on the queuing, queuing through the ball. And uh, true to form, I'm still motoring. Um, I left myself on this ball. I'm hoping this yellow above it goes in the middle. And there's not much to do with the white. I can just uh, roll the uh, roll the first yellow in off the bottom yellow. Uh, I'm just adjusting this microphone situation. Uh, um, again, probably nothing too much here. Just roll it in. Catch that yellow fin. Well, I missed my cannon, but uh, been fortunate enough to block the pocket, so I feel like I'm in a pretty good position. Yeah, I'm in a bit of strife here. Sean, Sean completely screwed that up, but he's uh, it's turned out pretty well for him. Not a lot of options. Might just try and bunt this red over the yellow. Not a real good option that either, so let's try and get some safety up the other end. Total? You might want to have a look. Uh, Butters has played a pretty good shot there. I'd consider that a containing shot. He probably knows as well as I do. I'm probably favourite here at the moment. It's a pretty dubious one here. We might get someone else to look at that. Yeah, I think we'll get someone else to have a look at that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Absolutely. Uh, actually, hang on. Well, from where I am, I don't think I can hit that, so... No total, mate. Do you want to have a look from this side, Butters? Just, just humour me. No, okay. All right, so Butters uh, decided no total. It's fine. Um, again, I've got to make contact with the cushion, obviously. Um, pretty confident I can do that. Just a gentle. Pretty tight. A gentle nudge off the side rail into the yellow that is closest to my yellow over the pocket. Um, again, I don't want to knock it too far out of position. I just want to hit it enough to get it to the cushion and uh, see what Butters has in store for me next. So, again, it's probably not a difficult shot, but uh, one that you, uh, if you get careless with it, yeah, it can still be missed. So, it's a pretty important shot again. Yeah, that's a good shot. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Only concern I do have is at some point if, uh, you know, Butters is going to work to take in that pocket. Yeah, he's still got me in a lot of trouble here. Just getting a score update there. We've got to find some good coverage. Just try and kill this black a little bit. Stun this in, try and nudge these open a bit and get a good, good safety.
total? Uh, yes, total granted. Total granted. Okay. So, um, just mopped up a few of his balls there and uh, played another good snooker. Uh, bothers me a little bit that he's killed the black. Um, I'm going to assume that was on purpose to sort of try and slow the frame down a little bit. Um, which was a good option. I love you, everybody! Uh, face with a tricky one here. There's no, um, oh, Pike, there's no and simple escape, one cushion, two cushion or otherwise. Um, Uh, probably going to get a bit adventurous here. Jack up a little bit, play a bit of a swerve. If I don't catch it on the way, hopefully on the way back. Actually, on the way back would be a better result. Um, let's see how we go here. Pretty limited. And I've missed it. But um, I probably missed it good. It's not a, not a bad leave. Yeah, I just said that. <laughs> Mr. Good was the term I used. <laughs> Very tough to get this right out of here. <laughs> Very tough indeed. We'll cut this in the middle. <laughs> Red's right on the cushion, so really difficult. Possibly even just slam it and double kiss it. And got absolutely no result at all. Well, um, not what I, probably not what I expected to happen, but um, uh, Butters is well known for being an aggressive player, and I guess sometimes that's the opposite side of the coin. This is still not pretty for me, but uh, hopefully with the, hopefully with the two shots, I can come up with a way to make sure of this frame. Um, getting a bit of heckling from the sideline. Um, I must look a little confused. Um, look, I'm probably going to back my queuing here. I'm going to roll this yellow in the over the pocket and back myself to knock the young yellow in, leaving myself two for the black. Um, Also, there's another option. I could try and pop this yellow over the pocket and screw up into the yellow near the rail, leaving myself an easier shot into the middle. But um, a lot could go wrong with that too. You know, I could snooker myself. Um, I do like that option though. Yeah, I'm going to try and count it into the red. It's probably a lesson learnt there. Uh, coincidentally, I'm uh, back to where I probably would have been when I was um, looking at just rolling it in. So, um, probably left myself a diff more difficult yellow. But this is what happens when you uh, playing cannons and whatnot. Sometimes you need to rely on a little bit of luck, and I uh, probably haven't uh, haven't been as fortunate as I would have liked. Going to need something here again. This situation, it's all or nothing, so really I've got to back the one asset I do have, and that's my queuing. Try and back my queuing and knock this yellow in long. Holding my two for the black. Yes, 
cued that okay. Cued that okay. Uh, uh, a lot of distraction behind me too. A lot of shit on copping over there. But um, best way to solve that is uh, to make sure of it. I don't want to do anything silly here. Take a time. That's what we've got a minute for. Really make sure of it. We're just doubling it into the open. <laughs> Using our two. It's uh, probably ideal. No need to dive into it. You reward yourself. Just make sure you knock this in. Nice and light on the cue, especially off the rail. And we got that. Thanks, Pete. Right, right. Bye. Cheers, mate. Well, that'll be fucking interesting. <laughs>
Let's go, Chuka! Come on, mate! So two down, the Aussies at the moment. A couple of good opportunities here. This is a big shot from Kev, but he's uh, he's chopped it. He hasn't chopped it at all. It was a good attempt. So good good opportunity for Josh. Uh, knock one in or get a good safety here. If Josh can pinch this, we've got Wellesley, uh, Wellesley looking all right up the end. And Chooker in reasonable shape here. This game can turn very quickly. Any danger of chucking the mic on, Sean? So I don't have to talk to myself, mate. And uh, okay. wel welcome back, Sean Partridge. Hey, Pete, thank you. It's a uh, pretty close, pretty close affair tonight. Absolutely, That's, mate. What's happened there? That was um, probably a result of the uh, awkward killing. But uh, oh, jeez, talk about awkward killing. I reckon he's almost straight in the middle. If he's not, well, stiff. That's a bad shot. You shouldn't leave yourself anywhere near the black. Anywhere on the table, he could have landed there. Mm. Don't know about that shot, Sean. I don't know about that shot at all. Um, you know, in that situation, sometimes it's better to die, have it to go to win rather than die wondering. But um, it's not a bad leaf. Yeah, it's um, not terrible. It's still, it's still tricky for Josh to get safety, but... Yeah. Uh, I think Josh probably feeling a bit of pressure too. He's had the greatest start to the day. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like we did. Yeah, like we did. I'm a, what a great captain's not for me, mate. 0 from 3. And the only reason you won one is because you played me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can see his plan here, but he's uh, completely underhit it. He's opened him up a bit, though, so the pressure's on Kev now. Easy to get a snooker now if he gets another shot. You know, I fancy Kev. He's uh, not a bad killer. Bit of a part-time player these days, but probably a little bit underrated. Uh, he does play uh, well. You know, whether he's going to deep screw this or he's going to... Looks like he's playing it backwards. Yeah, I wouldn't play it that way. Either would I, because you leave the wide yeah. across. Wow, look at this. Jeez. I would have been looking to play it in the other pocket. With the, make my absolute best effort to screw it off the rail and to leave the wide on the back rail if he missed. So. I, I reckon Josh has every chance of getting a snooker here, mate. I know I'm going out in the limb. I think uh, Josh got all of a sudden got far more comfortable than what he was a two minute ago. Without a doubt. Frame. That's, that's, a, 
That's peculiar the worst, that's shot. That's probably the worst shot I've ever seen. That's a very peculiar shot. I only needed to nestle in with the X to the other yeah, one there. All, all he's trying to do, he's hit it too fat because he's trying to avoid going in off. What do you do here, Pete? Oh, I'd swerve and pot it, mate. Is there enough, enough distance between the black and the yellow for that? That's a really good shot. Has he left a big pocket there, though? Not sure. Yeah, there's definitely room, but he's got to get on something first. Well, look, I think he can... Uh, is he on the one in the middle? I reckon, I reckon Chooker might have set the trap here. I think I just hit the mic with my finger. Uh, All right. Josh taking a bit of time here, taking a bit of care. Uh, he, uh, looking over at the table, it, it appears on television like he can pot this yellow in the middle, but... Um, yeah, I'm not sure if he can. I'm, I'm looking over at the table, it looks like he can't, so... It's actually a ripper leave for Kev. That's a great shot. It's obviously touching ball, too. perhaps. Obviously, Josh has got a touching ball here, and he's probably going to go around off the three cushions and try and snooker him. He struck that pretty well. He struck oh, that very well. That's a great shot. Sometimes a little bit hard to, um, sometimes you under hit those. You've got to really cue through them confidently, and he struck that really well. Kev having a good look. He should be able to swerve, but across the table's a good option it's here. It's a very too. dangerous swerve to try and pick, kick the goal. I'd be playing off the second cushion, but. It's a butter special. Oh. It's a butter so, special, but not a Kev special. Huge, huge favourite here now, Josh. Yeah, well, um, I'd like to see Josh, uh, yeah, just just slow it down, slow it down half a step here, and just make sure of it. Just roll this in the middle, play the one under the black, and finish off. Uh, yeah. so he left himself right there. Just don't don't overthink it, Sean. The um, yeah, it looks like a comfortable inside the black here. This is obviously the key shot. So make sure you get the wide out in the middle and you're all good. He hit that nicely. He hit that nicely. Didn't overhit it. Overhit it. You'd, you'd, you would have liked the black still over the pocket, so yeah. you, you don't you know, no, you guarantee potting it. Yeah, but. He hasn't moved it too far away from the pocket, which is good. And Chooker's so, up and Tony's up, so that's Tony, one each. Tony Wakefield won there. Yeah, nice played, confident shot there. Played that nicely. That's a good shot. Well played, That's a Josh. lovely shot. He's got a bit of rhythm now. He's killing a lot better than he was earlier. Well, we're about to have three tables empty. Yep, he used his two. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. They're there to be used. Yep. Well done, Josh. And a good mop up. All right, I better go support these boys. We've got some catching up to do, Sean, with not many to go. Yeah, it's a tight one this year so far. Um, well, we're waiting for three new matches to come. Um, the uh, this is the third annual holding of the Ashes. Um, it's definitely growing in popularity. It's something we look forward to each year. It's a good get-together. It's got a good, fun, competitive nature to it. And uh, uh, Team Great Britain, they're uh, looking for their first win. We've uh, yet to win one. So um, whilst it is a fun day, we're, we're pretty keen to get a result. Um, pretty even sides this year. We've been fortunate. A lot of years we don't have, um, we don't have a full complement of players. A lot of guys travel overseas at this time. But uh, it's certainly the best squad we put together. And, um, yeah, so far it's been proven to be a good match. A lot of ebbs and flows. And, yep. <sighs> now, I believe we're about to commence the third round, are we? No? Oh, we're in, well in the third round, sorry. We're um, three games left. 19's a win. Oh, 
We have um, on the first table down the other end where you can't see, we've got Declan versus uh, Pikey version 2.0. He's um, right into the festive season and enjoying himself. On the second table, we've got uh, Robbie Wood and Lee Sweetland, which I think we're going to be able to see shortly. And uh, the third table, we have Enrique De Giorgio, the second best to Giorgio, if Gus is watching. Um, Isabella, yeah, that's what I said, second best. Enrique's the second best. Oh, right. Isabella being the first best and uh, Gus being the third best. Um, so we have switched over to Robbie Wood, who has uh, what, what, what a lot would call a very, very nice spread of reds. Uh, Robbie, pretty, uh, pretty fluent player. I think um, he'll move through this out pretty quickly. Not a lot to do. I don't think he's got to move the white more than six inches on any of the shots. Roll in after roll in. Obviously, in a team situation, though, these, uh, these outs can become difficult with the pressure and whatnot. A lot of heckle on the sideline here today, probably more than, you, more than a normal pool night. He's probably done a bit more with the white there than he needed to, but still okay. Still okay, definitely not the way I would have gone with it, but um, he's uh, just got to get across the middle of the table now for the final red. Probably hasn't gone across enough, but he's still okay. He can uh, get on the other side of the black. So just another roll in to go. One of those outs where you could, uh, not a lot could go wrong. Taking his time here, Robbie. I like that. Sometimes Robbie will rush into it a little bit. Uh, he's done that well. He's done that well. And that gets Team UK to the uh, to the hill, which is 18. And here on the other table. We have Enrique at the table for Team Australia. Um, and uh, we've got Loz Hind. Uh, I'm not too familiar with Loz. I'm only meeting him properly for the first time today, but uh, he's held himself very well. He's in a very, very strong position here with a pocket covered. Yeah, I don't mind that shot at all. That's another really good shot. Certainly switch, certainly switch things in his favour with that shot. Uh, probably just rushed into that a little bit, didn't get enough thought. I like his, I like his thinking, he wanted to keep that yellow over the pocket. So he's chosen a harder shot to do so. And unfortunately, when you play with a loose white like that, sometimes you can go in off. And that's what's happened. On the other table, we have Declan against Pikey. Declan at the table, a lot of cheering going on. Interesting. 
Inter interesting shot there by Enrique. I think uh, probably a little bit early to go inside that red, but uh, aside of that yellow. And um, he's had a bit of a lash at that one too, and he's given away two shots. Probably uh, not a lot of damage done though with the balls the way they are. But uh, still an interesting way to go about it. And you can probably hear a bit of premature music. That's a pretty good shot by Loz. Probably, uh, probably not the best result, but um, something there. Uh, oh, that's a good shot. 